This is a new review for Scrivener 2.0. As you may already know, I've already done one for 1.5. So you may want to uh, watch that first, as this one is more of an update rather than a remake. So here you are in Scrivener. When it opens up, you get project templates. So you can select blank, fiction such as novel, short story, non fiction such as for an essay, a paper, or research proposal. Script writing. You've got various templates like BBC Radio Scene Style or Comic Style or Stage Play US UK Screenplay. Poem under uh, Poetry and Lyrics, and the last is miscellaneous for things like uh, Recipe. But I think most people probably start with blank. But let's just go to Novel and hit Choose. You can then save it to where you want. Let's just save this on the desktop for a minute and call it S1. And here we are. Let's just resize the window. And as you can see, it looks very much like the first one. But there's lots and lots of new features, such as things like even even things like remember last mode which is basically where if you go to a folder let's say chapter you can have things like uh, various layout things like outliner so let's just select this one go off of it let's just go here then go back and it's remembered the mode you're last on Go here, and then let's go back. It remembers. So that's just a very small feature. And then you've got bigger things such as you can create ebooks, things like that. But let's start with page view mode. So let's go to this here. Then let's go to view, page view show page view there you can see it as a page instead of taking up the whole window kinda of like looking at a real page and then you can hit things like two page across then you can view it almost like a book with two pages beside each other go to view page view you can uh, select use printed page size or use a page size that you've defined in the preferences let's untick two pages You can also now move cards around freely in a freeform mode. So let's go to cards. So let's just go to like chapter here. I've only got one card, so let's add new text. Here we go. Now we have several cards, and now I can demonstrate how you can freely change your order just by clicking and dragging. Very basic uh, idea, but it's still handy, and I'm sure a lot of people will use it quite regularly. You also have comments and footnotes in the inspector. So let's go to novel format, select some text, hit comment. Here it is in the inspector. Let's just add a comment. enter Oops. there we go just click off of it now let's add another comment there we are so now you have it here and also it acts as a bit of a bookmark so you can select different ones and it will go to it here We'll select it here and it will select it in the inspector. See? Can you see that? There. And then if we do it here, it does the same thing. So, say you had a comment here and then a comment pages and pages down, like let's just have one here. It, it's an easy way to travel along cross documents as well, which is very handy. 
you have also quick reference panels. So how would it be the easiest way to demonstrate that? Let's say, let's go to research, hit a spacebar, and as you can see you get what looks like a quick look window. You can select labels, uh, no status to do, things like that. Go to the synopsis for it, or picture, file, keywords, things like that. Also, Scrivener can also, in Scrivener you can also open files that it doesn't directly support. Such as, say, an Excel document. You can just drop it in, and it will show as a link in the main window that you can click, and it will directly open it into whatever program on your computer is associated with it. And if you do this, you won't get this kind of edible mode. You'll get instead a standard quick look window. Okay, I'll just sort of show the idea of that. If I make the window a little smaller, I have a real basic project file from a trial I downloaded. I can drop it in. You get this message, import. Or you can just import supported files only because this isn't supported but let's not take that and just hit import it anyway here we are down here as you can see it doesn't actually display it because it doesn't recognize the file but if you click click it if you click it it will open in the associated program let's just cancel that drag it to research and if I hit spacebar as you can see you get a standard quick look window whereas with this file here you get the customized one for Scrivener next is compare snapshots so you may remember from last time that you can create snapshot files let's take a snapshot now there we are Now, let's show snapshots. Here's our snapshot here. You can hit compare. Or show original. To compare, to compare it with the original. Or let's just take another one. Well, let's make some changes first, shall we? Let's just delete that. Now, let's create another snapshot. Now let's select both files, compare, and as you see if we scroll down it shows what piece here has been edited, as you can see I deleted this one so it shows that that there is different, or if I select compare it's comparing it with the original, and here compare, and if you have let's take another snapshot three you don't have to select them all or just compare it with the open document you can select by holding down the Apple key and just select which ones you want to compare a handy feature to compare your backups and snapshots show changes and you've got some options here um, but yeah so compare snapshot is a handy feature which wasn't in the last version and you can also create custom icons for your folders so let's move on to that next let's find a folder chapter now let's go down from document change icon you have a whole list here of icons at the moment it's on a folder sort of look the standard let's have a TV now you can see the icon next to the chapter has changed to a little TV icon. You can also do characters. Or you can do manage icons. Here you can open up an icon by hitting plus and select an icon file. Here you have icons in application support. It says note that icons contained in the project package override icons stored in the application support directory. So if you add it here, 
that that is priority up here and also I believe that allows you to take it to more than one computer whereas if it's stored in here it's on your computer and probably wouldn't load on another computer you also have sync so if we got a file sync you can sync with index card if you have an iPad simple note or external folder so let's sync with an external folder you then get a big long dialog called sync with external folder you then can choose a folder with which to sync files from this computer uh, project so you choose a folder mm, let's choose documents I think you should probably really create a dedicated folder there then you get lots of options such as sync with contents of the draft folder file numbering let's go down here and you can select final draft or plain text txt file or rtf you probably want to leave it on rtf and you can sync I won't do that right now but I think the uh, most interesting feature of that is to be able to sync on a program on the iPad so you can go away go traveling or whatever and bring your iPad keep uh, working on your project come back and sync it also probably my favorite feature of 2.0 is the name generator so if you go to edit writing tools and at the bottom we have name generator here we are it's dialogue looks very simple you can generate one name at a time or up to 500 let's go down to something more sensible like 12 generate names and here are 12 generated names such as William Clark Mary Harrison let's go here and you get more options so you can have just male names, just female names, or doesn't matter. You can also use four names, use initials only. You can have double barrel surnames. You can include or exclude certain names sort of uh, dirt lists, such as male, uh, male four names, female four names, or Hindi, Indian, Japanese, Polish. So you can include or exclude certain uh, directory of names. So let's go up and you you know you select certain ones. Like say you might want Japanese names as well for certain characters, things like that. Number of four names and initials. So uh, I only have one selected. So basically you get a first name and a surname. Select two. Generate. You can also have middle names. Like Rebecca Robert Jenkins. Or if we select three generate you have four names really useful tool and like I say you can use a slider and generate a lot more or a lot less okay so that is basically the name generator very simple but very useful you then have revisions so let's go back to here so here we have revision mode let's go down from format to revision mode and you select first, second, third, fourth, fifth, none or remove and select first start typing and select somewhere else select in here and then if we select format revision fourth of course you get different colors which can also be changed in preferences and the feature that probably most people have been waiting for is under compile